Drinking blood has a lot of significance in the mythology and folklore of many cultures. Influenced at least in part by the strong association that blood has with life, death and vitality. Stories of blood feeding spirits and demons consuming life essence to more modern vampiric creatures are common across the world. However, the real living and breathing animals that feed on the blood of other creatures are actually incredibly strange anyway. Blood is mostly made up of plasma, which is mainly water, and blood cells are very low in carbohydrates and fat, the normal things most animals use as an energy source. Raw blood is also highly vulnerable to harmful pathogens, and in the majority of cases, blood drinking and sucking animals, that are known as sanguivores, only feed on living creatures that are considerably larger and stronger. So given all of these issues, why have creatures evolved to live off blood? Across the animal kingdom, the most common way animals acquire energy is either from glycolysis, breaking down carbohydrates and glucose for energy, or lipolysis, the breakdown of fats and fatty acids. Almost all animals are capable of both, however, this changes depending on type of activity or length of time after eating. But also herbivorous creatures lean more into using carbohydrates for energy, and carnivorous creatures lean more heavily into using fats. However, there is another way that animals can get energy from their food and that is by breaking down protein. All animals are also capable of turning protein into glucose in their liver, turning it into a usable energy source. However, this is fairly inefficient, so although protein is crucial for certain bodily functions, most animals only use it for energy as a last resort. Animals like bears and wolves will only start breaking down protein for energy if they are so low on food, their reserves of carbohydrates and fats have almost depleted. Some highly carnivorous mammals, like felines and hyenas, do use protein as an energy source more often, but even still fat makes up the majority of their body's fuel most of the time. Blood is comparatively low in more common energy sources, but it is very high in protein, and blood drinking creatures, or sanguivores, like vampire bats, manage to survive on a blood only diet because they have evolved to rely almost entirely on protein to fuel their bodies and their nightly activities. Most animals have to turn protein into glucose first in order to use it, but vampire bats are able to use the amino acids directly as a fuel source, the building blocks of proteins. And this phenomena was studied in 2024 by placing vampire bats on tiny treadmills. There are three species of vampire bat that are all found exclusively in the Americas, mainly in Mexico and South America. The common vampire bat, the hairy-legged vampire bat, and the white-winged vampire bat. The common vampire bat is able to move quickly while grounded by sort of galloping but dominated by their front limbs in a similar way to a gorilla. This is amazing to watch, but it also offers a way their respiration can be studied during activity in a controlled environment. As the bats are held within a confined area and the intensity of their exercise can be changed by changing the speed of the treadmill. The bats were fed cow's blood that had been enriched with amino acids that had been isotopically labelled, which is just a way that the researchers could keep track of their specific amino acids. The oxygen being breathed in by the bats and the carbon dioxide being exhaled was then measured as the bats were running at different speeds. Most mammals breathe out a proportionately higher amount of carbon dioxide when they are exercising with greater intensity, as their body is switching from using fats to carbohydrate as their primary fuel source. However, in the study, the bat's ratio of oxygen and carbon dioxide didn't change while running at faster speeds, which shows they don't switch their fuel source and just use protein or amino acids. This means vampire bats have evolved a highly unique metabolism that is markedly different from all other known mammals. However, they are not alone in the animal kingdom. Many sanguivorous invertebrates have evolved to use amino acids as an energy source directly as well, like many mosquitoes, leeches, and certain flies. So, the vampire bat's ability to break down amino acids has moved them away from mammals, but is actually convergent evolution with many invertebrates. It's possible that their unique metabolism is actually one of the reasons that vampire bats have become such social creatures. Vampire bats live in colonies that can range from a few dozen to several hundred, hiding in caves, tree hollows, and old buildings. They emerge from their dens, where they spend most of their life, at night, and descend mostly on large mammals like cows and horses. However, other species like the hairy-legged vampire bats are slightly smaller and specialize on feeding on birds like sleeping chickens. When these bats land on their victims, they make a small incision and drink from the wound. At the end of the night when the vampire bats return, they have been observed regurgitating their blood and sharing it with other bats. 
Their unique metabolism may allow them to consume a blood-only diet, but this heavy reliance on amino acids has made them more vulnerable to starvation as well. Amino acids are much more difficult to store and less efficient to convert into storable energy than fats or even glucose. However, by regurgitating their blood and sharing it with other bats that were less successful at feeding, they have mitigated a lot of these issues. Due to this lifestyle, it may have been necessary for them to develop strong social bonds. The high level of specialization doesn't stop here though. The bats have a heat sensing organ on their nose that helps them locate where blood is flowing closest to the skin for easy access. The incision they make to drink blood is made by their large fangs, famously. However, past their proportionately larger front teeth, vampire bats actually have very few teeth, as they have adapted to lose them since they don't need to chew their food. In order to keep the blood from the wound flowing, the bats have even developed an anticoagulant protein in their saliva that has been named Draculin. Once they have drunk their fill and it comes time to leave, they face specific challenges from drinking blood as flying animals, because an all-liquid diet is very heavy. Blood is mostly made up of water, which means that for every bit of usable energy the bats are taking in, they are also accumulating a large amount of water weight. For instance, a vampire bat can consume half its body weight in blood in one feeding. They combat this by having disproportionately large and specially adapted kidneys that process large volumes of blood extremely quickly to remove wastewater as fast as possible, concentrating the urine and keeping them light enough to fly after a meal. They are so good at this they can urinate within two minutes of drinking. This is comparable to hummingbirds that face a similar issue, drinking a heavy all-nectar diet as flying creatures, and in a similar way have just evolved powerful kidneys that remove water quickly. The treadmill study that was conducted on bats has also shown how quickly bats can process blood, as they were able to metabolize the amino acids that had been added to the blood as quickly as 10 minutes after eating. Blood is low in carbohydrates and certain types of fat, but it does still have a lot of other nutrients in it, like iron, that actually make it a very attractive place for bacteria and other microorganisms to survive and multiply, meaning it is often contaminated with harmful pathogens. Vampire bats may have adapted certain features to help them deal with bloodborne diseases specifically, but bats in general have a fascinating immune system that helps deal with this issue. For humans and most mammals, many of the symptoms and even damages of an infection are caused by the immune system's response to an infection rather than the infection itself. Bats have a unique immune system where they have developed a high tolerance to many viruses, preventing a strong inflammatory immune response, and instead just coexist with many infections. Due to this, bats can be carriers of many illnesses but be completely asymptomatic. This helps bats with many facets of their lifestyle like living in large colonies where disease can spread rapidly, but in the case of vampire bats, it helps them live exclusively off a food source that is prone to disease. So vampire bats are highly specialized small mammalian parasites, and other sanguivorous creatures have had to evolve similar specialist adaptations, including additional things like a proboscis for sucking up their blood, or in the case of animals like mosquitoes, a numbing agent in their saliva that masks the pain of their feeding. So in order to live off blood entirely, animals have had to drastically change their bodies in a number of ways, which makes you wonder why go to all the trouble. Well, not many animals have evolved to drink blood as their only food source. Vampire bats are not just the only sanguivorous mammals, but the only non-marine vertebrates that live this way. And most solely blood-drinking creatures are very small, the largest most likely being the lamprey eel that only grows to a maximum length of around a meter or so. However, there are many animals that drink blood in addition to other foods. Blood drinking creatures run into issues when it makes up the whole of their diet, but animals don't have to go to anywhere near the extremes if blood just makes up a small part of their diet. And there are some easy to see benefits to drinking a small amount of blood as supplementation. It's low in some nutrients, but very high in others, and although the very high water quantity causes an issue for bats and some other obligate blood drinkers, this can be very helpful. When resources are scarce on the Galapagos Islands, the vampire groundfinch turns to drinking blood from other birds, mainly the Nazca and blue-footed boobies. The finches mainly do this in the dry season when their other food like insects and seeds are less available, but also when water is less available. The finches are endemic to the wolf island, which has no natural fresh water sources. However, the blood gives them an extra source of hydration, making them more likely to survive the dry season. Although there are no known bird species that feed solely on blood, there are quite a few species that drink blood regularly as part of their diet. Among these are the oxpeckers. Oxpeckers are best known grazing from the backs of large mammals eating small bugs that get kicked up by herds of animals and removing ticks and other parasites from their skin. 
However, oxpeckers will also drink the blood from wounds of the mammals they are cleaning, reopening wounds and in some instances even cut open the skin to drink blood. Interestingly, when the vampire finch drink blood from certain birds, the birds are not actually very resistant, and it has been theorised this may be because they started out like oxpeckers. They were cleaning parasites from these birds before adapting to drink their blood. There is even a species of moth known as the vampire moth that has evolved a barbed proboscis that is predominantly used for piercing fruit, but has been observed using it to pierce the skin of mammals and drink their blood, including humans. It is unlikely the moths are getting little if any energy from the blood, and the purpose is most likely to actually get certain minerals, primarily sodium. A similar behaviour is observed in other moths and butterflies that are known to drink from puddles, animal dung, or even the tears of sleeping birds to gain certain minerals. One thing that is well understood about vampire bat evolution is that it happened very quickly. Vampire bats evolved from a lineage of leaf-nosed bats, and it is likely they were insectivores. Genetic evidence shows that the three species of vampire bats last had a common ancestor with non-blood drinking bats around 25 million years ago, and within 4 million years they had made all the necessary adaptations for blood feeding. 4 million years sounds like a long time, but in evolutionary terms this is extremely quick, and would actually make vampire bats some of the fastest evolving mammals. And this is probably because animals have to be so specialised to overcome the many issues with a blood only diet. To live off blood, vampire bats have had to change so many features of their body, and many of these adaptations have come at the expense in other areas, making them less able to hunt and eat other foods. So this doesn't leave much room for a transitional period, and would have meant their evolution would have had to have been very quick. So in the case of vampire bats and many other sanguivorous creatures, they had to adapt faster than usual to survive. Thank you for watching. A big thank you goes out to all my patrons especially the big contributors that are listed here. If you like content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.